Welcome everyone, welcome YouTube subscribers. So I'm gonna do a little bit different uh, video uh, this time. We're, I've been hearing a lot of talk and I've been seeing it across a lot of uh, YouTube uh, talk about inflation. And I'm seeing it everything, you know, I looked up my YouTube account today and I saw uh, Grant Cardone's talking about it. And I'm, I'm just seeing a lot of uh, talk really across the board about inflation. Yes, there are a few people still talking about deflation, but you know, by far the majority is talking about inflation. And I think there's, you know, there's definitely fundamental reasons behind that. So I definitely want to point, kind of talk about that. But on the, on the thread of inflation, I wanted to just go in this video and look at some of these inflation based, uh, you know, commodities looking at, you know, looking at various, various things that will benefit with inflation. One thing uh, about inflation, uh, we, we haven't seen inflation uh, really for quite some time. However, when it shows up, it often is hard to stop. Uh, and that's, that's kind of been proven. Uh, that's why economies go into hyperinflation and stuff because they, you know, they see the inflation, but they, they have a hard time stopping it. The other thing to understand about inflation is sometimes you don't actually need to see the inflation in, uh, in the data to get the inflation right away. Um, sometimes it's just the expectation of inflation will actually start to create that inflation. So the data can lag the actual inflation that's taking place. And I think that's what we're seeing now is, is you know, in some of these ag commodities, we're seeing all kinds of commodities really going higher. And yet the, the, the inflation data that the government reports is, is you know, not, not stating, not showing that inflation. So the reality that I want to look at is, you know, you know, are we going to see continued inflation? Are we going to see, uh, you know, more prices going up, which is essentially the dollar losing value? The other thing to understand, I think it's important, is I was thinking about, you know, I was looking across markets and really thinking about where there could potentially be uh, value. And, you know, th they call this the everything bubble. That's what this, uh, you know, it's a central bank induced everything bubble, basically, where everything is going up. And I was thinking about that this morning. And, you know, the thing that that really comes to mind is, you know, everything is priced, everything that's going up is priced in dollars. And so perhaps it, it really is inflation. And we are just seeing the dollar you know, the dollar is losing value. And, and that's why everything is going up because everything's priced in dollars. So, you know, there, there's obviously an investment thesis behind that, that we can look at, and we're going to get right into the charts. Now we'll start out here with this DBA, which is a, uh, it, it's really a agricultural ETF. It's got about 12 different agricultural uh, commodities in it, everything from corn to wheat. Uh, I think there's uh, c cow and lean hogs. Uh, coffee. It's got a lot of different ag commodities in it, but it's just a basket of ag commodities. And here's the chart that I got on the daily chart. So obviously we have a downtrend line here and we, uh, you know, this is going back all the way to 2014. Uh, nice clear downtrend line. This one below is, you know, it's not as defined below, but the point is that we broke to the upside on this uh, breakout just right here. Now, Obviously, I think everybody knows that the ag commodities and commodities have been doing very well. It's, it's obvious at this point. And, but the point that I'm just trying to make is on the longer term chart, we're, we're starting to break, you know, this is a breakout basically. And so we're potentially starting a new bull market in uh, ag commodities. And so we want to look for opportunities there. Now, as a, as a technical analyst and someone who's looking to find key entries and exits, we want to look at the charts to help us key on key in on where's a good spot to buy. Uh, and so I want to point that out on this daily chart here. You can see here this low that we got back here in, you know, basically May, April 2020. Uh, the COVID low basically was was, you know, to me, looks like the end of what the bear market was in this uh, ag commodity space. This was actually forecasted right here too. you see the bullish divergence where the momentum started to move higher right through here on the daily chart. And yet price was still making new lower lows. So you can see these are all divergent lows all through here. Let me just go ahead and circle that. This was your, this was your, 
your uh, bullish divergence where you kept making lower prices and yet momentum kept moving higher, signaling that a trend change was likely. It doesn't mean a trend change has happened. It just means, you know, that's what a lot of people I think get mistaken is when I, sig when I talk about negative divergence, they say the trend is your friend. And I understand that the trend is still intact. This just signals that a trend change is likely. Um, which for me means, you know, it's time to start scaling out of trades, looking for, you know, raising stop losses, looking to trade a reversal, you know, all kinds of uh, things you can do on that. But here's the, you know, that's where the trend change was likely. And you can see we obviously got the trend reversal. And here's your breakout right there. So we broke, you know, we started to break out, kind of dip below, but this is a confirmed breakout right here. So now what I think, you know, what do I think we do? Well, I think it's usually when you get breakouts like this, you come in for a back test. You come in and back test that trend line somewhere down here. Uh, you know, I don't see that in the daily chart yet, but let's look at the hourly here and see if we can see what's going on. Actually, I take that back. I do see, so I'm starting to see some negative divergence here on the daily. We do have negative divergence right there uh, on the RSI. And you can see here on the PPO, uh, we've got it right there where we're starting to make lower highs in the momentum indicators and yet right up here we made a higher high in price so that's a divergent high as of right now now obviously if we you know continue higher we can burn through this divergence it doesn't have to remain so that's why you just key in on the fact that there is a uh, negative divergence and then you start looking for a trend break a break of trend basically so I see right now we've got a pretty clean uptrend it's right about yeah it's right about there we can kind of tighten it up on the hourly just to get it you know more uh, more accurate it's about right there so again we're in an uptrend on the hourly we have negative divergence on the daily we uh, we don't necessarily have negative negative divergence on the hourly uh, but we do have it on the daily and, you know, I think it's likely because everybody's kind of loaded onto one side of this inflation trade, from what I can tell, uh, I think it's likely we got to, uh, you know, we've got to uh, shake some of those people out of the trade. And to do that would be a back test of the trend line. So a break of this trend run down, uh, you know, and that would be a good size drop from where we're at there. That would be a drop of about 8% or so. That's pretty good, depending on when we get there, 8 to 10%. And uh, for me, that would be the area I would be looking to, uh, to add or take a position. Because again, going back to the daily, this is a long-term breakout uh, and it's a nice clean breakout. So I do think it's very likely that any kind of weakness that we get uh, will be a buying opportunity for the next move higher in these ag commodities. Now this one, Joe, is included in that DBA, but I've been kind of keying in on it because it's, I feel like it's really underperformed what some of these other ag commodities have done, such as corn or, or soybeans has been on fire. Uh, and Joe Coffee just hasn't quite, it just hasn't looked as good. So I think there's opportunity there. Uh, but what I'm looking at right now on the chart, on the daily chart, negative divergence, this one's been building for a while. And so all of these highs, let me just go ahead and circle them all through here, divergent highs. Uh, those are all divergent highs. And we've got this trend line right down here. And I think a break of that trend line brings us down to about 32.42. And that's the area I'd be looking to be a buyer. Uh, that is the area that would be, you know, that that's where you've got some support. So coming down that would probably satisfy this negative divergence we get we get you know we buy in there and then ride this thing up for potentially a pretty explosive rally if you look at coffee you know i mean this thing can easily go up to 45 or or beyond um so we'll watch that corn obviously has the same look where you've got negative divergence on the daily chart uh, and again, whenever we see negative divergence on the daily, it's a lot more believable than negative. You know, negative divergence on the hourly is good for small moves. Negative divergence on the daily usually can be good for, uh, you know, much better, you know, 10% or, or more moves. Uh, and that's what we have right now. Here it is on the RSI and the PPO. We've been kind of inching higher. So this was a diver divergent high. We have what looks like a bearish rising wedge. We're starting, we started to crack that on Friday. 
uh, just barely though again looking at the hourly you can see we're just barely starting to crack it uh, so it's not impulsive yet so again until you see that impulsive break it, it's not a confirmed breakdown but if we do get that impulsive breakdown going back to the daily I think it's likely same deal you know on the corn going back to 2014 long term you know this is a bear market in this commodity and uh, let me go ahead and get rid of that tool and we've broken out you know that's a clean and clear breakout very impulsive as well so it is from my book a longer term play uh, it looks good for a, a longer term kind of bull market but we've we've gone pretty far pretty quick so I think we got to shake some of these people out of this trade to do that come in for a back test you know if you can get it down around 1420 or so, something like that I think that's a very likely area there should be a lot of support down there uh, and that would be a drop of about 15 percent uh, somewhere in there we'll probably start to see bullish divergence showing up uh, and again I'd, I'd be looking to be a buyer down there okay so let's look at gold because gold is an obvious inflation hedge one of the other things that I think it's interesting is um, we, we could be heading into a period of stagflation uh, and that could you know let me look up the I'll show you the definition of what that is Okay, stagflation, the thing that you really want to key in on is it, it's characterized by slow economic growth and relatively high unemployment. Okay, we have both of those today. We have, you know, really slow GDP and we have pretty high, you know, we have very high uh, unemployment. And at the same time is accompanied by rising prices. Okay, so I'm showing you in, you know, I'm showing you in this video the ag commodities and gold and pretty much everything has been rising in prices. Lumber, we'll check that out. Uh, and then, um, you know, so that's basically what it is. You've got low growth and rising prices. Uh, this oftentimes can be negative for the stock market. Uh, another thing you want to look at here is they talk about oil um, in the 1970s economies experienced rapid inflation and high unemployment as a result of an oil shock and you know we're, we're seeing oil rising as well as a commodity so again these are all negatives oil rising is, is harmful for the uh, uh, for the economy commodities are are that's that's uh, you know that's inputs for for companies so higher expenses higher cost of goods sold and then you've got um, low unemployment so uh, this is something to look out for it's very possible that we see uh, stock markets fall and we see prices rise uh, and yes that is stagflation so that that would be kind of the worst of of pretty much all scenarios that you could get and we will uh, we'll continue to monitor that going back to the charts here um, let's look here at, at actually let's go back and look at uh, lumber Lumber, I heard, just hit an all-time record high. And you can see here in the lumber futures, pretty much I think this goes back. Let's look and see. We can go back months. Uh, this contract that goes back to 1972. And you can see, well, it's a continuous contract. But you can see we did just hit an all-time record high in lumber prices. So, again, what does that mean? Well, that means building homes, uh, doing remodeling is that much more expensive. If homes being built becomes more expensive, then you know they have to they have to price those homes higher. Another thing is the uh, if you look at the interest rates, there those are rising too. You can see that long term interest rates are rising. So higher mortgages, more expensive homes, doesn't bode well for the housing market uh, in general, unless you have rising wages, you know, and you need rising wages in, to accompany that. Okay, back to gold. Uh, we're going to start out with Barrett Gold. So I really like Barrett Gold as a gold miner. It's one of my favorites. A couple of reasons, and I've talked about this in former videos. One, it's a large, it's a large gold miner. So they have reduced volatility, uh, just given their economies of scale and size. Uh, the other thing that I like about them is they're not indexed to the S and P 500. So Newmont Mining is indexed to the S and P 500. It's the largest gold miner, but Barrick is the second largest gold miner and they're not indexed so you're not going to have that you know passive that passive uh outflow of of money uh 
you know, if there is going to be a drop in the markets, then the and the S and P five hundred gets sold, they're going to have to sell Newmont Mining, even though it maybe it fundamentally is should be doing well. That one will get sold down with those pat with that passive money moving out, where Barrick will not. So, uh, I do like that a little. You know, I do like that a little bit better. Looking at the charts here, on the hourly, to me it looks like we got a bullish falling wedge happening, uh, and we've got some bullish divergence starting to show up. It's it's clear on the daily. The bullish there's your bullish divergence where we're starting to rise in momentum, uh, and you can see in the PPO it's a lot more obvious. So we've got bullish momentum, and yet price keeps making slightly new lower lows. On Friday, you can see they dipped it right down there to that trend line that I had marked out and bought it right back up and closed near the high of the day, not completely at the high, but in the upper uh, range of the, of the day. So, you know, we look for a breakout now. Uh, I'm starting to build a position in this again. Uh, yes, we could get lower prices, but again, it's got a good technical setup. Uh, and I'm seeing this downward trend line right here on the daily. Looking for a breakout of that. A breakout of that would be your buy signal. Uh, you know, I step in a little bit early on these because uh, I just uh, I like these a little bit better with uh, some of the fundamental backdrops and the technicals look good. So what, two ways to buy. You know, two ways to buy is you can buy at support, which is down here, or you can buy at a breakout above resistance. Both of those are are you know good. Yes, if you buy the breakout above resistance, you get a more expensive price, but you get a more you get more confirmation. So you get more guarantee or higher probability that the position is going to be profitable. Down at support is a lower probability the position will be will be profitable, but a higher profit potential. One thing on Barrick, uh, looking on the weekly chart, this clearly shows that Barrick's in an uptrend. So we basically have the lows in 2015, got uh, some reactions here. The COVID drop dropped right down to that support line and held. And so I think that's your longer term bull market trend line. Uh, but again, that doesn't mean we're going to just come down and tag that on the weekly. I see b bullish uh, bullish. Uh, technicals on the daily which so I think we break out and continue higher uh, and again at some point in time we will come down and test this weekly trend line but it could be way up here you know way here and further in time we don't know when that's going to be uh, I think that will be a buying opportunity when it gets there but for now on the daily I see bullish technicals telling me that it's time to start uh, building positions again in this one at least another one Agnico Eagle I really like this one we're not quite there yet, so I've got kind of this support zone right in here. Uh, you can see uh, right here at about 6240 or so would be the area I'd want to start buying. Uh, again, we held as resistance all through there, uh, and then we came down and tagged it as support right here. Let me go to the daily just to show that. We tagged it right back here in November. Looks like we're heading back down to that direction. Uh, what I'd like to see, honestly, is just a slight dip below this previous low right here of six. It's about 62.30 or so. We get a little bit down below there, and we do it anytime, uh, you know, well, somewhat soon. Then we'll probably put in that bullish divergence uh, that I'm looking for. So this one doesn't have bullish divergence quite yet. Uh, so I'd like to see that show up. Franco Nevada, this one does have bullish divergence. We're in a downward price channel right here, and we're starting to build daily bullish divergence right here. So again, you know, downward price channel, this can continue. Divergence is not a reason to go long or to buy, but it is telling you that a trend reversal is, is likely. So on this one, you could either buy at support, you know, down towards the bottom of this range, or wait for the breakout above the top of this uh, price channel. So Royal Gold, I do have a position in this one. I've had it for a little while, not too long, but I started buying it um, as we started, you know, as we're hitting these support lines, I'm, I've been adding to it. Bullish divergence on the RSI and the PPO. I don't have that marked out, but uh, there it is, right? If I can get my line tool working, uh, it's right here. So there's your bullish divergence and you've got a downward price channel right there. And we're, we're starting to break out. Now, it, it wasn't that impulsive. The, the one thing I like to see is an impulsive breakout. And we just don't have that quite yet. 
it just kind of started drifting higher on the breakout. Uh, it is a breakout, so obviously that, that is positive or bullish, and you do have bullish divergence. I'd like to see a gap up. You know, if we get a gap up on Monday, I think that's going to be very telling that we do have a breakout. So I'll be adding to the position on a gap up. And if they gap it back down below this, then that tells me that it's just not quite ready to break out. So again, I'm looking for that impulsive move. Until I see that impulsive move, uh, I'm more interested in adding down here at support. The juniors, GDXJ, um, you've got bullish divergence there on the daily, on the RSI and on the PPO. So that basically this uh, price action, well, really right there, was a divergent low. That that's kind of the only candle that really was a divergent low. And it, you know, it's kind of hanging in there. It's not really breaking out, but it is kind of hanging in there. On the daily, we've got this downward price channel right here. So again, a breakout above that uh, would be bullish. On the on the bottom end, you know, I've got the lows right here in Mar uh, May of 2019. And let me go ahead and get rid of this tool. And, you know, it's it's basically, there, there's not a clean trend line that I can really make on the bottom end right here. So I'm just, I kind of marking it out, but I don't don't really, don't don't use that as your trend line. And, and then on the bottom of the price channel, I can't really make a clean uh, trend line. So this one's not, you know, this one, I would probably just wait for a breakout above this upper trend line. That's kind of what I'm looking at. Here's one, Sandstorm Gold Limited. Uh, and this is coming off the January 2016 lows on the daily. So you can see we've got this, you know, up, you know, potential uptrend channel. Now we have a data point here, we have one right here, and then this is your COVID drop, which sliced through it. So not, not the cleanest data point. Uh, to me, you know, on this one, you know, maybe we're coming down into this, uh, into this potential trend line down here around 560 or so. Now that's a ways down uh, from where we're at. You know, that's still a drop of about 15%, but this is a this is a junior miner, so this can happen in a day or two days. We could see a final kind of drop down uh, or get close in the area, uh, and that might be a good buying opportunity, basically. So again, the other thing to look at, we've got bullish divergence right there on the daily. Uh, on the RSI, and we have it, it's right there on the PPO. You can see we're slightly uptrending right there on the PPO. So bullish divergence, all of this downward price action has been divergent highs, really starting about right here. This is where the bullish divergence started to show up. So all of this price action has been divergent uh, lows. And that tells me that a trend change is likely. We're coming into what looks to be, you know, kind of a, a major support zone. Also, you can see right here, we had some resistance here at 590. It held, kind of held through here. It chopped through it a little bit. We also held those resistance right there. Um, so maybe that's an area. But again, I think we're getting in the area. Uh, to, to me, it really looks like down and about right there. Uh is the buy zone probably you know and you could just trade it by one way to, that i would do it to me it looks like a good spot to buy at support basically down here you got this trend line that we've been walking down so anywhere down here we tag you know five five ninety uh about six bucks you know start work you know that's where i'd be looking to add to a position uh in in you know not all at once i don't buy everything all in one day but I, you can build the position as it tags support. And then if we break out and start to, and then you get the breakout above this resistance line, you can add to that because that's a buy signal as well. And then at that point, you'd have a, you know, probably a good sized position and we can see what happens likely this moves to the upside. Okay, another one, BTG. Uh, this is B2 Gold Corp. So here's the thing. On the daily, here's your Here's kind of the, the end of the bull mar or bear market in gold. This is when most of the miners, and you can see I basically can connect. We held support right here. Obviously the COVID drop kind of you know whipped through it. So we've got two data points and we're right now coming into you know that area of support. Doesn't mean this is a valid trend line because 
I only have two data points. Yes, the COVID drop did hold, uh, and this was kind of a liquidation event. So you kind of have to throw out the big drop here, but we have a data point here and we have, we're coming off the lows there. So we're coming into major support uh, area. Also horizontal support, it looks like, because right here at about 488, we held that as support for uh, you know a couple months basically. Uh, and that was former resistance. You can see right when we got there in February of 2020, that act as, as resistance into that COVID drop. Once we broke above, held it, confirmed it. Again, when you see it can kind of contesting with a level and it continuing to hold and then confirming the high, move higher, that signals major support to me. That's what I see. So right now I like this one. I think this is a very good looking chart on the also on the uh, RSI and the PPO, you can see on the daily chart, bullish divergence right there. We're starting to build bullish momentum right there. And so this is divergent low price action. So any kind of little dips, uh, I'm adding to a position that I've actually started. Goldfields GFI, this one doesn't quite look the same as some of these other ones. So I'm pointing out the ones that look bullish. Uh, this one, yeah, it looks a little different. So here's coming off of uh, 2018. Nice clean uptrend channel there. Uh, here's the COVID dip. I would just throw that out, just kind of mark an X and say, okay, that wasn't a valid, that was a li forced liquidity event. Uh, and we've continued to hold that trend. Now we broke trend recently right there. One thing to note though, the break of trend, it, it's not impulsive really. It hasn't been impulsive. Look at, we broke trend and we've just been kind of hanging out, re, recontesting with that. Now we're kind of starting to drift sideways, but again, it's not an impulsive breakdown, so that's something to note. Uh, we, you know, we we don't have bullish divergence. We, we're starting to make, you know, bullish momentum. It hasn't been diverging though. Price hasn't made a new low, so this one's a lit. This one doesn't look as clean to me. I think there's other opportunities that look a little better, but I could see, you know, if the gold miners start to run and start to make another leg higher, I could see just a, a recovery of this trend line and this might have been just a false breakdown. Metallo royalty and streaming. All right, so here's what we got in this one. This one, uh, this one's relatively new actually. So we've got an uptrend, clear uptrend here. Uh, this is coming off the March 2020 lows. So very similar to the rest of the uh, rest of the commodity space. Uh, we do have negative divergence, very clean and clear negative divergence on the daily, uh, on the RSI and the PPO. So this price action up here is a divergent high. All right, telling you that a trend change is likely. Uh, we're starting, you know, we're and and here's the, you know. The divergent high showed up right, right in here is where it showed up. Uh, so this price action has been divergent high, and we have had a sell-off, you know, from that high, really from the from the absolute high down to the low, we've dropped about 30%. So that's a good size correction. Uh, we have broken this trend line, and we'll, you know, again, it looks very similar to that last one that. Uh, gold fields we've broken we're just kind of hanging out we're not really dropping precipitously we're just kind of hanging out in this area so but that negative divergence is still there um, so again there's other charts that look a little better I mean you have to understand these gold miners are competing with each other so even if the gold if the gold space is doing well the they're still you know they're still competing against each other so maybe there are certain things about their competition that's doing better than these you know, and, and they're getting squeezed out, uh, losing market share. So you can have gold miners go down even if the space is going up. Uh, but in general, I think a lot of these gold miners look pretty bullish at this moment. All right, and we'll wrap up with Osisco gold. Uh, OR is the symbol. <clears throat> All right, so on this one, on the daily, long-term downtrend going back to 2015. Uh, and you can see it's just kind of downtrending. This one, has been making huge moves, you know, gyrating up and down, lots of volatility in this one, uh, you know, and here's what I got in the short term. Here's your COVID drop right here. Just kind of throw that out. And the lower, longer term trend line I see is way down here. Uh, moving on in. So we've got a trend line. We've, you know, we've got a couple data points here. We've got a reaction here. We've got a reaction here. And then recently, you know, we've kind of come down gap below. We've been kind of 
gyrating around this trend line. You can see on Friday what happened is it actually opened low b below down at 1087 and instantly they bought it up. And that's what I saw across most of the gold miners uh, on Friday is they gapped down and the buyers stepped right in. So that's positive. Uh, closing back above what looks to be support. What I would be looking for is a move in this one up to you know up to this 13 14 or so again a breakout of this level an impulsive breakout signals likely the next bull run or the start of a bull run in this one uh, so again this chart's okay it's it's there's some others that are a little bit better one thing i don't like about this chart is we don't really you know yes we are starting to get some bullish divergence right there on the rsi it's not it's not as uh well defined uh, and this actually is a bullish divergence on the PPO. So we don't really have as well of defined of a divergence on the RSI. A little bit of divergence here. This was a divergent low right in here. And uh, that's about it. You know, the PPO, if we zoom in, it's, it's not as clear. So that's the only thing I don't like about it. The trend looks okay. The price action and the candles look okay. Um, so we'll watch this. And that's really all I got. I just want to cover some of these concepts. Again, I think, you know, from my perspective, I think, I think some of these inflation plays, like the ag commodities, uh, are probably due for some sort of a pullback or a resting period uh, before they uh, continue on what looks to be like the start of a new bull market. The gold miners just going to gold, you know, they've had a, a resting period and a pullback. I mean, Barrett Gold here has been. Uh, just kind of going sideways to down uh, for about a year now. So it's had an, a pretty good resting period. And I think that that's about, you know, that's kind of what you need to get the enthusiasm out of a sector is, uh, you know, when a sector is really hot, you need to pull back, shake out the people so that you've got, you know, just the uh, the strong hands in the, uh, in the trade. So I think that's you know, what these gold miners look like. They, they've had a pretty good... Uh, you know, good pullback, and I to me they look like they're ready to start their next like higher. So that's all I got, guys. Thank you. If you guys find value and you're still here, leave me a thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning how to do this, check out my trading course. Link is in the description below. Uh, it's a $99 course. Well worth it, though I believe uh, for the value that you'll get uh, in learning these uh, technical analysis skills. I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye.